Have you ever found yourself making a knit or crochet project and writing notes about it in random places? If yes, you probably know that it can be difficult to find that information later and that's the reason why I decided to set up a separate journal for all my knit and crochet projects. Without further ado, let's start setting up the journal. I wanted to use a notebook that would be easy to take with me and would fit in a small bag, so I decided to use this travel journal size notebook from Notebook Therapy. I bought this notebook myself and this video is not sponsored, but I have an affiliate link Tian Pucho, which gives you a 10% discount if you are interested in this notebook. I have also linked all the supplies I used in the description. Because this is the first time I'm ever making a journal like this, I thought that including an index in the front of the journal might be helpful, so I can easily find where the information about the different projects is located. This notebook doesn't have page numbers, so I will have to write them myself, so we will see if I will end up using this or not. <laughs> I wanted this setup to be quite simple, so it wouldn't be too time consuming and this also made the process a little bit easier, because I didn't have any theme for these pages like I do have in my bullet journal for example. I still wanted to make a cover page in this journal though, so it would be a bit nicer to look at and I also really wanted to draw some cozy little doodles. If drawing is not your thing, you could always skip this part or make some kind of collage or mood board for your cover page. For my cover page, I first wrote out the title in the center of the page and then I used this kind of circular design for the doodles so they would frame the header if that makes sense. The doodles were actually inspired by the crochet and knit projects that I've made so far and I have posted a YouTube short about that, so definitely check that out if you are interested. I will link it in the description and I might show you some pictures later in this video as well. I wanted these doodles to have a handmade and delicate look, so I used this kind of broken line style for the doodles, which I've been loving lately, <laughs> and I used a size 03 fine liner for the main outlines. You could definitely customize this illustration and draw projects you've made instead, or maybe even glue pictures of them in a collage style on the cover page. I think doodling or adding pictures of your own projects makes the journal look and feel more like your own, so I definitely encourage you to do that instead of copying my layouts completely. For my cover page I drew some knit and crochet supplies along with my own projects to fill up the empty spaces. I have knitted socks only once when I was 13 years old I think, and I would love to make new ones later this winter. My mom bought me some yarn for that a couple of years ago, but I haven't bought the correct size needles yet, so that's why the yarn is still sitting in my closet. <laughs> Anyway, I would love to hear if you knit or crochet, and let me know when you started that as well. Here in Finland, knitting and crocheting are taught in elementary school, so I learned to knit when I was maybe 10 years old, I think. Crocheting has always been more difficult for me, because I learned how to knit first, and I think our teacher didn't like how I held the hook. <laughs> So that maybe made me feel a bit uninspired, I guess. Instead of holding the crochet hook like a pencil, I hold it like a knife, as it feels more comfortable for me, and I think it's important to teach that there are different ways of holding the hook. I probably learned how to crochet when I started university and wanted to make a granny square blanket, which was a good way to learn the basic stitches, as I only knew how to make a chain. <laughs> My mom actually learned how to crochet at the same time and helped me to finish the blanket, and now she's really talented at crocheting and loves making these kinds of lace tablecloths like the one on my table behind my notebook. I think this proves that you can learn to crochet or knit at any age, 
if you practice enough and have some patience. Anyway, my cover page is now almost done and I used my favorite colors to color the doodles and then I added some washi tapes on the top and bottom of the page for decorations. Of course, I had to finish off the cover page with some golden sparkles as they make everything feel a bit more special and magical. Next we are moving into collections that I thought might be helpful when I knit or crochet. The first spread is about different yarn weights because I found myself googling what they are all the time as I can't remember them yet so now I can just open this page and see what they are instead of googling which will save some time hopefully. <laughs> I also wrote the different yarn weights when they are held double on the bottom of the spread if I happen to need that information. For boxes I used my all-time favorite color which is pink and this was a Tombow dual brush pen in the shade 772. In the table of contents I wrote the different yarn weights and also which hook or needle size you have to use for them. I thought a gauge might be important too, so I added that as the amount of the yarn Tubekli has on the right side. By the way, if you don't know what a gauge is, that basically tells you how many stitches a 10cm piece has width and height wise, and it helps to make sure that your finished project is the correct size. So far I've mainly used a DK or worsted weight yarns for my projects because I mainly use cotton based yarns instead of wool. I have some wool left over from years ago so I will try to use them for some scrap yarn projects instead of buying new wool. Different types of yarns are definitely a hot topic. <laughs> And I think natural fibers are the most environmentally friendly, but I also want to make sure that the yarn is ethically produced. So that's the reason why I avoid buying yarns with animal fibers. I think this is a choice that every person makes on their own though, and I respect other opinions as well. I would love to know which yarn is your favorite to use, so let me know in the comments. As I live in Finland and we use the metric system, I just wrote the needle sizes in millimeters. So if you are from the US, for example, you might want to add the US needle sizes on this chart as well. On the page on the right, I decided to make a little list of my measurements because I will probably need them when I'm choosing which um, size of sweater I want to make, for example. Because I don't plan on making any pieces of bottoms, I didn't write those measurements in here, but I have some space on the bottom of the page if I want to add that information later. For the decorations, I just added a piece of this old book page on the bottom of the spread, and then I added some washi tape on top. I also have these beautiful girl stickers from La Dose Vita Studio, which I've totally forgotten to use in my other journals, so I decided to add one of those in this spread to make it a bit more special. I love these girl stickers and I definitely need to use them more. <laughs> now let's move on with the setup. If you knit or crochet, you know that there are plenty of different abbreviations related to them, and also a lot of different symbols that are used in crochet or knitting charts. Because of that I decided to dedicate this spread for the crochet abbreviations and symbols that are most commonly used. There are a lot more of these though, <laughs> but I didn't want to write them all down because that would have taken forever, and I can always write them later if I find myself needing that information. Instead of writing the title by hand, I decided to add this old book page behind the title and then use my alphabet stamps from Notebook Therapy for the header. I love how this turned out and this was such a simple way to decorate this spread and I will probably use this technique a lot more if I end up making more spreads like this later. To write the different abbreviations, I used my favorite fine liners, which are the Sakura Pigma Microns. You could also use a gel pen for writing this out, and that would make your fine liners last a bit longer. 
but I didn't do that because I found that the gel ink spreads out when I'm erasing the pencil marks underneath. If you have recommendations of gel pens that won't do that, definitely let me know in the comments. By the way, I don't know how well you can see this, but I ended up making a little spelling mistake as I wrote black loop instead of a back loop. <laughs> So I corrected that later with a white gel pen. I don't know how I managed to do this even though I had sketched out all the words, but I guess it just happens sometimes. Anyway, I did a little touch up for one of the letters on my title with a black pen, because that didn't show up enough, and then I added some stickers on the empty bottom right corner. These stickers are from Oak Monica, and if you've been watching my other videos, you know that I love her stickers and use them a lot. I've also bought this myself, so this isn't an ad. I'm just a happy customer. <laughs> On the next spread, I wrote the basic knit stitches that I might need to know, and again, there would have been a more of them, <laughs> but I decided to write just these basic ones. I found a chart on Pinterest that I used as a reference and it has the different symbols and abbreviations written down in a chart form, which felt like a convenient way to display the information. <laughs> With knitting, the stitches look different on the right and wrong side, so one symbol can mean a different thing depending which side you are working on. I guess this might be true with crocheting as well, but I'm not completely sure, <laughs> so let me know in the comments. I guess the difference isn't as big though. So far I've only needed from written patterns as I've made very simple designs, so learning how to read a knitting chart is definitely on my list of things to be learned. I've bought this beautiful pattern from Utova Kika, which would probably be a good project to learn about the different knit stitches and charts. Oh, and I found Kutovakika's channel when one of you recommended me to check that out. So thank you so much for that. And if you have any more favorite knit or crochet designers or content creators, definitely let me know in the comments, as I would love to check them out. One of my favorite content creators lately has been Jenna Phibs, and I will leave a link to her channel in the description if you want to check that out. As my first language is Finnish, I also included a list of Finnish crochet and knitting abbreviations in this journal, but I cut that part out of the video as that wouldn't have been that interesting for you to watch. <laughs> you will see that spread in the final flip through though, so stay tuned. So far I've mainly used patterns that are written in English, but I think it's nice that I always have the option to use Finnish patterns as well, as then I have more where to choose from. One thing that I found myself struggling with is knowing which hook and needle sizes I already have. And I have for example bought another 4mm crochet hook because I didn't remember that I had that one already. <laughs> Because of this I made this chart where I can see which sizes I already have and I think this is going to be very helpful. I can also take this notebook with me when I'm going to yarn store so I can make sure that I get only the things I need and don't already have. I divided the knitting needles into double pointed needles and I also wrote the length of different circular needles so I can keep track of those. For the decorations I used this washi tape that I got from my friend and I think this is from Mariko Nasuli Art and I will link the shop in the description. I also added a little section for notes on the bottom and finished off the spread with this cute little sticker. Moving on to the next spread where I'm going to write projects I want to make in the future. I often see many beautiful patterns in social media and later forget them or can't find them anymore, so I thought having a spread where I can write all those down might be helpful. I divided the page in half and have the neat ideas on the top and the crocheting ideas on the bottom. 
Some projects that I would like to make in the future are for example a crochet hexagon cardigan and maybe a new beanie as well. <laughs> so far I found that knitting works better if I want to make some clothing and crocheting works better for accessories like bags for example. But I think it may just be the fact that I haven't found great crochet clothing patterns yet. If you know any great crochet patterns or designers, leave them in the comments. Anyway, I get this spread super simple, so I would have a lot of writing space. And I just added a couple stickers for decorations along with some cool details. Now we are setting up the last spread that I made in my journal setup. And this is how I'm probably going to use my journal moving forward. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I ended up writing notes about my projects on my phone. So now that I have this journal for it, I wanted to transfer those notes in it, or at least the ones I could find. <laughs> the notes that I usually take about my projects are things like how much yarn I might need, and how much yarn I ended up using after the project is finished. I also write the yarn I used with the shade and the dye lot in case I ran out of it and will need to buy some more. Sometimes I might also make some changes to the pattern, especially if I'm making a piece of clothing so it will fit better and I will write those down as well in case I want to make the same project in a different color, for example. You could also add photos of different parts of the process of making your project, or add photos of the finished project in here. And I think I might add the labels of the yarns I used, as I can see the washing instructions from there, for example. Anyway, here's the final flip through of my crochet and knit journal, and I would love to hear what you think of it. If you don't knit or crochet, you could always make this kind of journal for other hobbies as well, and I hope you got some new ideas or inspiration from this video. Remember to leave a like and also a shirt emoji in the comments if you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye bye!